I'm about to share with you the top three things that lead to student success. Number one, time management. Yes, that's right. Your ability to manage your time is one of the top ways to be successful in college. Though it may not seem like it, something as simple as making a schedule of when you will study and carefully tracking your assignment due dates and tests can have a major impact on your student's success. But let's think about this for a minute. If you don't know when your assignments are due, you're not very likely to turn them in on time. Here's an example. To help you think about the impact of not turning in an assignment or doing so late, you had a 40-point paper due today that you completely missed and you haven't started, so there is no way you will be able to turn it in on time. In this class, any late assignment receives an automatic deduction for being late. Deductions are 10 points per day. Let me take a pause in this example to explain where you can learn about late assignment rules for each of our classes. Class and assignment rules are clearly outlined in your course information document, or CID. Rules for your classes are set by your instructors. They will not have the same grading policy, so read your CID for each of your classes. You may find that some instructors will not accept late assignments. Another instructor may have five-point deductions per day or some other rule. Each instructor can set their own class rules regarding late or missing work. Make sure you carefully read the CID at the start of each of your classes. Now back to our example. Something as simple as turning in your assignment on time can make a 10 point difference or even an entire point value of the assignment depending on course rules. Missing 40 points is no minor deal. It's easy to think that missing one assignment will not have that much of an impact on your final grade but it can really be the difference between you getting an A or a B, or even the difference between passing and failing. Each assignment and each test need to be viewed as important. Not only will you be missing critical information if you skip assignments, but it will also impact your overall grade in class. It is important that you find a way to stay organized. Know when each assignment is due and schedule in enough time each week to complete all your assignments and prepare for quizzes and tests. You also have to balance all the other things that are happening in your life. So put your work schedule on your calendar. Include when you have to do other tasks that are at set times, such as picking up your siblings or kids from school, your best friend's birthday parties, club meetings, and so forth. Staying on top of your schedule and properly managing all of your time will reduce your stress level and help ensure that you are able to meet all of your commitments. A student who manages their time well is a successful student. Now let's move on to the second tip for being a successful student. Tip two, information retrieval. This is the ability to clearly remember information you learn. The key to doing well on your test is your ability to retrieve information from your memory. That sounds sort of obvious, but in reality, there are many times that we think we know the information. But when we take the test, we don't know as much as we thought we did. This is because when you review your notes, you recognize the information and think that means you know it. But if you have to write it out in detail what you know on the subject or explain it to a friend, that is when you will discover what you know or can retrieve and what just looks familiar. To do well on tests, you need to know the material at a level you can teach it to someone else. You are now probably wondering, how do you become good at retrieving newly learned material? The answer to this question is easy. But the truth is that it is also a lot of hard work. You need to access the new information several times and quiz yourself on the material repeatedly. Read about the topic, watch videos, take notes, study with friends, and quiz yourself. As we mentioned earlier, if you can explain the topic to someone else without referencing their study materials, then you are ready to take the test. Tip three, self-efficacy. Self-efficacy means believing in yourself. In relation to academics, self-efficacy must be tied to having self-confidence in a specific learning area or task. If you do not feel confident in your ability to pass college algebra, you are already at a disadvantage. If you don't believe in yourself, you are more likely not to succeed. It is important to believe that you can do well on a subject before you start it. If you are not confident in your math skills, what should you do? Most of the time, it's not going to be as easy as giving yourself a pep talk, but you can build your confidence by proving that you can learn this subject. B 
Begin by recalling a time when you have been successful in the subject that you are anxious about. Build your confidence by practicing the subject and recognizing your own strengths. There are a number of ways that you could do this. Using the math example, you could start with a lower level math class to build your skills and confidence, or you could work in the transitions lab in the tutoring center, or you could practice math from any number of free online tools such as the Khan Academy. The key to self-efficacy in any area that you are worried about is to start working on it at a level that you are reasonably comfortable with. You don't want to jump into the hardest classes just to get them over with. Start at a level where you feel competent and then work your way up. College is a ladder system. You start at the base and work your way up. The ladder might look really steep and you can't even see the top, but once you get there, you will look back down and say, wow, I can't believe how far I have come. It is possible to achieve success. Just take one step and then keep on going. Sure, sometimes we have to take a step back to get on the right footing again and catch our breath, but then keep on going back up the ladder to reach your goal.